Alright guys, so definitely been a while since I made a video. Still stuck over here in Kuwait. Uh, not really a whole lot going on <clears throat> to uh, let you guys know of. But uh, I've been trying to get back online and doing a bunch more videos. I've been trying to keep up with the uh, YouTube uh, commenting and watching and subscribing and liking and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully you guys have noticed that I'm still in there. Uh, I'm still messing with this camera. Still messing with Windows Movie Maker. Um, so hopefully I have some better content soon. This is a video that I've been waiting to make for a while. Um, just haven't had really like the right way to do it or whatever. Um, mess around with Windows Movie Maker, got a bunch of pictures and basically anyway I, I um, had built a shed and I took a lot of pictures, um, quite a few. I uh, didn't really get any video <clears throat> but I wanted to show just how I built it and just kind of give you guys one of the projects that I made. It was my first, one of my first big projects like that by myself. So I was pretty proud of it when I got done. But uh, I got all the pictures, got them all sorted like in chronological order. Uh, I'm trying to do a narrating, have to use different programs because my microphone on my laptop's funky. Tried using a cell phone, and then of course I'm recording this on the um, Sony with CVX 405 or whatever that camera was that I picked up. And uh, so figured, hey, I'm sitting here not really doing anything. I'll try to knock out a video for you guys. So hopefully you enjoy it, and hopefully everything works okay. I suppose if it doesn't, you probably won't see this. But um, yeah, so that'll be it for now, and we'll go ahead and start with the video, and we'll see how well I can narrate. All right, so basically this is the house that I bought in North Carolina. I was stationed there for five years. Decided to go ahead and end up and buy a house. Here's some pictures of the backyard. Um, I put my, I had my fence put in and they left the trees. So as you can see, I had to cut a lot of trees. That little blue tarp in the corner is where I originally stored some of my smaller three-wheelers. So I wanted to get those trees cut and build this shed. Here's some later pictures and just the, the other end. Um, before I end up cutting all these trees out. I ended up clearing quite a few trees out. Just a quick pick when there was um, snow. This is when I was starting to plan and starting to level the area and whatnot. Still had some trees left to cut. And this is my building permit. I don't know if there's any special information on there, but don't live there anymore anyway. And then the big build. Started building the floor joists in the garage. Um, just making sure everything was perfect and square and everything was the exact same length. Got some junk washers and dryers in there for the scrap yard. Um, I knew DeWalt saw there you see I was using and yeah just putting all the floors together the joists was a real big project for me so I was excited once stuff started to get rolling. Uh, I'm glad I didn't put it in place you can see the blocks I used I think they're like 16 or 15 inch just patio stones I dug the ground out as you can see put a little bit of crusher run down that's a picture of the hurricane straps they go about 30 inches in the ground I think and I just leveled them out dug down a couple, couple inches probably closer to a foot put those stones down and then uh, com well, compact it then put the stones and then put the patio blocks level them all up put this in place of course hurricane strapped it down see here I wish I probably would have probably should have put the corner in the center of the block to distribute the weight evenly but it would be a pretty easy fix to jack it up and uh, you know re-level if it ever goes out of level so it was my first my first shed so it was a good idea to learn some stuff or whatever uh, here we go with some more. I just threw some crusher on. That's what I had left over. And then just random uh, bricks and blocks that I had left over I threw under there just to make the floor more steady. And here's just my trailer. As you can see, uh, I used, used motor oil on the bottom to help it from uh, not rotting from the bottom up. Um, yeah, I used my Big Red, 85 Big Red out there a lot to uh, just take stuff in and out of the garage, tools, and whatever I was using to work with for the day. It's another picture of those hurricane straps. It was, it was uh, mandatory for North Carolina for me to do that to get the building permit. And then I started putting the, uh, I think it was 5 8 plywood I used, stained it with used motor oil on the bottom, then just put it down. Um, here we go, got the floor completely done. That would took like, you know, probably like a day to put all that in and then put the floor on. Did this all by myself pretty much for the most part. Uh, I got my little cheapo um, chop saw or my um, skill saw there and uh, just trying to get stuff done. A lot of it's a first time learning experience. Um, I'll show you guys the YouTube channel where I learned a lot of this stuff. I uh, helped build a lot of sheds before uh, when I was growing up, little wood sheds and stuff with you know uncles and cousins and dads and grandpas. But uh, on this one I used all screws pretty much. Would have been a lot cheaper not to. I went a little overboard. Uh, it would have been nice to find some cheaper rough cut lumber from like a local mill or something like that, but I had to buy everything from Lowe's. But I earned a lot of tools in the projects too. Like I bought this DeWalt chop saw. You can see all the DeWalt, uh, the little, I don't know, cordless hammer drill, impact drill thingy that I used. That's a rack I built on the back for the receiver hitch so I can haul 16 foot lumber, rest the other half on the roof. Here's when I started building my wall studs. Everything's on 16 inch center. 
um, the, from the floor all the way to the roof. So here's some more of my studs that I built. Got them all perfectly straight. Built them right there on the on the floor after I had the floor built. Um, just makes it a little bit easier that way. And then just set them all aside. Just more pictures of my lawnmower trailer and all the materials I was using. Get all four of my um, walls done and framed up, just like right there. Had a buddy come help me with this, just stand them up real quick and then nail them in place. Making sure everything was perfectly square. Uh, that, actually, that little, that big spool there you see, I found that on the side of the road. That ended up being the biggest help for this whole project. That's what, that's what I, that was like my workstation. But as you can see, my backyard's all sand. So it was a big mess out there. Here's just another trip, probably probably my second or third trip of buying stuff. This would be for the uh, roof rafters. And this is when I made my roof. I started building my, uh, I don't know if you call them rafters or whatever. I don't know. I'm not a, not a carpenter, but this is the jig I set up. That way they're all identical. It's just a 30 degree cut on both ends on the top. And then the bottom cord is just a 60 degree cut. Um, of course, I liquid nailed. And like I said, I screwed everything. Anywhere there was possibility for liquid nail and screws, I put them. And then just use a half inch plywood on both sides as my um, bracing. I didn't really see the point in buying the metal ones or you know paying any extra. So I'm plenty, plenty strong. Definitely overboard. 16 inch centers on the roof. I could have easily done two foot centers. And but I wanted it to be perfect and I wanted it to be done and done right. And otherwise, I just would have bought a cheap shed from Lowe's and paid out the ass and had a crappy shed. So yeah, I was really happy with these. They turned out really good and they all worked perfectly um, for a shed. You see, I put the little window in, put a little um, I mean, like a, a bottom cord underneath. Can't really see, but I did a um, header above the door. And then me and my buddy had another buddy come over, and we went ahead and put all the roofs up. You can see the 2x4 uh, I used across the top there to make sure they were all on 16 inch center and perfect. And then um, just slowly started putting all the stuff up. Uh, I, I did use half inch I think it was half inch plywood for the roof which I definitely would have used OSB or chipboard next time just to make it cheaper kind of a waste of money or whatever so I don't know here's another picture from the inside uh, just getting stuff done I did run a stringer all the way down the center this is another precaution I guess I don't know I had extra boards but yeah got pretty much all the roof all done in a day that's a lot of up and down in the ladder and what a huge pain but I had to use the siding first so I could build my end ladders there as you can see for my overhang on the end I think when they come without an overhang they look kind of stupid so I built my own overhang and I did over top of that making sure everything was measured to be 16 foot the building itself is 10 by 14 but with the overhang it's got a foot on each end so it's um, 16 foot just for best use of uh, material and you see both those ladders I purchased during the build and I started doing the shingles. This was a whole day's work right there, up and down the ladder, snapping chalk lines and all that kind of stuff. It was a real pain in the ass. Uh, just more materials. Every day, like I said, I would come out of the garage, scrap the three-wheeler, and pull it into the backyard with all my materials for the day. And then we would go. Uh, this end here, you can't see it, but I'd already I, I'd started putting in the uh, gable vent in. I didn't vent the roof like I wish I would have. You see my backyard, it's a big mess. But yeah, it's coming along pretty good. This was like the last thing I had left to do was the door. And I was going to do a sliding barn door, but the sliding tracks are super expensive. So uh, yeah, I finished up. I did a full soffit, soffit vents. Uh, painted all the soffit. It was half inch plywood. Could have used chipboard. Could have used, you know, some sort of plastic or whatever like that. But I wanted it to look good. And then I got the window in. Probably get that framed up. Here's the door that I built. Um, just like a, like a barn door latch type deal, but just two swinging doors, real wide. I want to say it was 50 inches or 52 inches. That way I can get all my three lures back there and all that kind of stuff. Lawn's starting to look a little bit better. Shed's pretty much done. And that's pretty much the end of it right there. This is the end of the uh, shed build. Here's the These pictures really didn't turn out the greatest. They're off of Facebook because they're old. And I got them all finished up. Here's the last little bit of them. It turned out pretty good. I matched the paint to match the house. And... The, you know the side and the uh, what call it, the uh, shingles match too, so it turned out pretty good. And then this is just more pictures, more pictures, more pictures. So right, I really like the way so that turned out. Hopefully everything works out with this video. Hopefully I can splice those narrations together with the uh, uh, pictures. I just threw it on Movie Maker and then did a recording separately, and that way it's the same same uh, time per picture and everything like that. Uh, a couple things I forgot to mention was I used, uh, I'm actually looking at my laptop right now, I'm trying to look up the guy's name, Country Life Projects, or Projects like he says, I think he's a Canadian guy, um, he's got a great YouTube channel, I'll put his link down there in the description to his channel, um, 
just a lot of different basically breaks down every single thing on how to build a shed and I learned a lot from that guy like I said before I built a lot of sheds with um, family members just you know little wood sheds and stuff like that uh, a little bit different because we never did wood floors we always did just hand poured concrete and then you know rough cut lumber and you know a lot of times it wasn't shingles it was like used tin or whatever we could find basically for a wood shed or like a little storage shed my grandpa's got 30 storage sheds here and there with all this stuff in it so i helped with those helped build a little bit of houses and stuff like that I helped here and there and stuff like that but definitely not a carpenter by trade and definitely not perfect but i was really 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 happy when i put the i think it was called lp smart siding was the stuff i used it's a chipboard on the inside but the outside looks like a texture 111 kind of it's pre-primed. It comes in four by eight sheets and it's almost like a locking, like a tongue and groove um, and the hooks together. But when I put that stuff on, uh, every corner was perfectly square. I was expecting, you know, be a short on a little bit or sticking over a little bit. But I mean, when I say I wanted it to be perfect, I measured and measured and measured and measured like a hundred times. So I was sure that it was gonna turn out perfect. And then uh, what I did uh, also forget to mention was on the inside of that smart board before I laid it down and on the bottoms of some of the, um, the floor joists. I went to Lowe's and I can't remember who told me a long time ago, but if you go to Lowe's or Home Depot or any of those big box stores, go to their paint department and ask what they have for used used paint. Basically someone will buy paint and they don't like the color or doesn't they order too much or like that and they'll actually sometimes they'll return it. So then it'll be on sale. Well I bought an outdoor um, it was like I think a deck paint. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was specifically for like decks and stuff. So it was supposed to be like super good against water and any sort of moisture and like that. And it was like four or five bucks. And normally it was like a fifty dollar can of paint. I uh, didn't really care what the color it was. It was like a tan. But I used that on the bottom like foot or so of the uh, LP smart siding. And then when I got done with that, I put a little bit of what I had left over. I just kind of slapped it on the very very bottom of the building. Um, as you can notice, the top right-hand corner of my property is where I put that. There's like all the drainage in the world up there, so the bottom of it should never get wet. It should never have any issues. I put four of those hurricane straps down. I think they were 30, either 30 or 32 inches they went in the ground. Um, never even heard of them before. Um, they were just like, it looked like a, any of you guys that are from up north, um, got ice fishing. It looked like, a, like an auger. But they screwed it into the ground pretty easy. Went down 30 inches and then they had their little quarter inch cable. Got, came with all the ties and stuff like that. I don't remember how expensive they were. But all said and done, uh, I did learn a lot. I would have changed a lot. I would have done it a lot cheaper. Um, but I'm happy with the overall, you know, the way that turned out. Um, I even built the door header, which I'd never even, I mean, I've always seen them in buildings and stuff and uh, seen people do them. I never really understood why or how they work or anything like that. Uh, supported the window properly as, as far as as far as what I know for a shed. Uh, my dad saw it and my stepdad saw it. Um, both have plenty of building experience and they were like, this shed's way, way overbuilt. It probably will outlast your house. So with any luck, hopefully that's what'll happen. As long as my tenants keep the uh, pine needles off the roof. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, can't really tell you how much longer, but it'll be not much longer before I get back to the United States of America. And we'll get some uh, other videos up. Probably get a cold start of the Dodge, the 88D150. That's sitting in, um, POV storage, so I'll be there about five months. So I might get a chance, I'm not really sure how much of a pain or how quick I'm gonna have to try to get in there and get it out. But it'll really just need like a battery charge and check the oil and stuff and we'll see how quick it starts. Uh, and then it's gonna be moving stuff in and out of the storage unit and maybe messing with a couple three wheelers. Maybe do a ride video here or there. And then I'll be uh, exiting the army. So lots of stuff coming up within the next year. Hopefully I get some more videos out and hope you guys had an awesome new year and holiday season and all that kind of stuff. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Please stick with me and we'll have some more videos up as soon as I can.